It's like, we want you to run a race and get to the end, winning the race whilst tying your shoelaces um, is the order of the problem. So we need someone who can run and tie their shoelaces at the same time. Hi, I'm, I'm Bernie Miles. I'm Head of Engineering for Wafer in Europe, and I'm talking today to Derek Ennis, who's a Principal Engineer for Wafer in Berlin. Hi, uh, my name is Dara Ennis. I'm based in uh, Berlin. I work at a lovely organization called Wayfair. And I'm talking today with Bernie Miles, our Head of Engineering in Europe. Uh, when Bernie isn't um, doing Head of Engineering stuff in Europe, he likes to do broadcast TV and interview people. Excellent. Well, look, thanks very much for making the time today. Um, very much appreciate this. Um, I'd love you to start off by maybe just give me a, a sort of overview of, of why you decided to join Wayfair. My family is mainly European. Uh, we've been living in London for 15 years. But once Brexit happened, it was time for us to leave uh, as we were uh, ideologically partitioned from where we had made our home. Um, so in moving to Europe, um, an opportunity came up to build event processing technologies at Wayfair, who I didn't know a lot about at the time, and eventually um, said yes and moved to Berlin. So, so I guess there was, so it sounds like some, some push factors with Brexit and also the pull factors of the opportunity to build event processing for Wayfair. Uh, how would you describe the event processing challenge at Wayfair and why does Wayfair have a particularly interesting event processing challenge? So that's a great question. Um, Wayfair is surprisingly a, a company that operates at fairly extreme scale compared to most organizations. So in most organizations, scalability is simply not a concern. So most off-the-shelf open source um, event processing and other system software and infrastructure works just fine. Um, at Wayfair, however, pretty much every piece of infrastructure we have is running with very specific um, uh, customizations to work at the scale that we operate. For example, Wayfair produces across the production estate about 20 terabytes of log messages on a daily basis. Um, and that's not 20 terabytes split evenly throughout the day, and it's not 20 terabytes uh, every day of the year. So we get a lot of issues with quality of service when if we tune the systems to a certain capacity, uh, with the uh, more and more people per, uh, buying um, furniture online, um, we can get into a situation where we don't have the capacity we need to serve the demand that we currently have. And that's a fairly specific problem that needs specific attention for Wayfair. So we needed logging metrics and other critical systems that when we're over capacity can gracefully degrade services without impacting the business. And by that, we mean by never impacting the customer. But if internally we have um, non-critical systems that we can tune down during these times, that's exactly what we do. Um, and event processing is a very good way of dynamically responding to those changing capacity requirements. So it sounds like you, you didn't know that way for before and you really joined to solve this particular problem. Is that fair to say? Yes. And um, more, more generally, how would you describe the um, responsibility or the role of a principal engineer at Wayfair? So the role of a principal engineer at Wayfair, I think, is um, it's fairly similar to the role of a principal engineer across the technology industry. It's a, it's a more senior or experienced engineer, typically. It's typically an engineer who has um, solved um, one or many technical problems in a specific domain, so they're a specialist, for example, in our case, we might have experts in supply chain and logistics. We may have experts in warehousing and factory control systems or freight. We also have experts in infrastructure. Um, so all of these specialists have spent a long time building systems in these areas, supporting services in these areas, and, and generating a very specific set of knowledge which has very specific utility and usefulness and importance at a company like Wayfair and other large organizations with similar scalability challenges. I think the second component of a, a principal engineer is that a principal engineer is less concerned about the technology itself or the code or the architecture or the design. These things are important. They're used as force multipliers by the business. So they care more about business impact and outcomes, and they use their expertise in ways to 
scale people within the organization to meet changing demands. Um, so they would work across teams and across organizations to get things done. And they try to mobilize others to work together towards a common goal. So you are one of a handful of principal engineers we have at Wayfair out of a population of engineers of about 3,000. So I think it's fair to say uh, these are the people at the top of their game, the peak of their career. Um, how much time do you spend coding? How much time do you spend coding on a, on a, on a daily basis? Or how would you describe the split of work that you typically encounter? Um, so we have areas where I'm pretty much coding 80 or 50% of the time. And then we have times where if I get to look at code in a week, I would be lucky. Um, I think for, for more senior engineering staff at Wayfair, a lot of variety comes from the domain that you're attached to, in my case, infrastructure and event processing and the related uh, problem domains and challenges. Um, it, and a lot of it comes from the trading life cycle for Wayfair itself. At certain times of year, certain teams will be busier, um, and that will reflect on what we do day to day. Um, on average, it works out at 50% or less. What would you look for if you were looking for uh, hiring a principal engineer? First and foremost, um, it, they do what they say in the tin. It's, it's not only important to have certain skills, but if they're not exercised, well, they're not useful, are they? So exercising the skills that one has is a critical component. Um, second, I think Wayfair is a reasonably social organization. So spending and taking time for others um, is an important part of the responsibility. So for example, if we happen to be going through a recruiting drive, that becomes a priority. Um, and that's something that time should be spent on. When we're at critical trading periods, that becomes a priority and it would take precedence over other activities. Uh, one shouldn't be reminded of these responsibilities. A principal engineer should know where to flow and where to um, focus. In, in relation to the current open role that we have in, in, for a principal engineer in Berlin, um, which is on our partner home supplier facing website, um, could you describe what you perceive to be as some of the, the real challenges there? I think the real challenge for um, Partner Home is the opportunity to take it somewhere it's never been before. Um, so the Partner Home solution that Wayfair has, the service, it works. It, it does just what it says on the tin. Um, but as an organization, we're trying to move it to a place that is um, way beyond what it was designed to cope with, to handle. It, it requires um, engineering it in a way that um, is uh, kind of conformant and compliant with um, the cloud-based kind of migration that a lot of our systems and services are now being built with. So there's an element of digital transformation. transformation. And um, there's an element of the unknown. So how do we build uh, a B2B to C partner home environment that our suppliers can use extremely effectively uh, to make them spark joy in all of their interactions with Wayfair um, so that we can optimize for better deliveries for our own consumers. And how do we scale that to these suppliers, solving their problems um, in such a way that everyone um, throughout that um, value chain um, benefits. Um, and, and this is something where um, an engineer can come in, take ownership, find out what that means. Uh, well, what is the, what would actually spark joy and then start um, moving us and migrating us towards there by evolving the existing system. Remember, 20, 20 terabytes of log data a day. We're, we're not talking a trivial amount of interactions. We're talking a significant uh, number of suppliers and a significant number of customers and constant 24-7, 365 interaction across the globe in areas that we're expanding into and in areas that um, have different requirements depending on the culture of that particular country in terms of their e-commerce habits. So this is a significant challenge. Um, so finding ways to um, make that better um, and to move that forward is a very, very significant uh, engineering problem. And it's one that's going to require collaboration from across the business, whether that's um, the other um, lines of business that are uh, stakeholders in partner home, um, like the catalog management teams, um, or even the payments teams, um, 
or it's the infrastructure on which it sits, because much of this um, is changing um, continuously. It's like, we want you to run a race and get to the end, winning the race whilst tying your shoelaces um, is the order of the problem. So we need someone who can run and tie their shoelaces at the same time. The, the principal engineering role is one where um, you, you have a lot of influence, but you're not necessarily having reporting lines into you. So you're exerting, a, um, so you're sort of lead, having influence and, and leading. Um, you know, how, how do you go about um, effective leadership uh, in your situation? So I, I, in an organization like Wayfair, where we only have a handful um, of, um, say, principal engineers and, and even relative to other organizations, we don't have as many senior domain specialists or technologists relative to the general population. So you might have a 1 in 50 dilution of um, principal or higher engineers to all the other engineers in a lot of the large Fortune 500 technology companies we all know. Um, in Wayfair, we have 1 in 1,500. That's the dilution. So it's very highly likely that your influential subset, your 1 in 1,500, have far too much uh, have far too much demand on their time than they have capacity to ever possibly serve, which is why we're hiring so many uh, people so that we can fix our dilution problem because we've got the mix wrong. Um, as we move faster and faster with technology, um, um, technology and infrastructure change and our lines of business become much more sophisticated in what they're trying to deliver out to their lines of business, we need a lot more specialists. And we need those specialists to you know, be able to join in the marathon and be able to you know, run in the, the, this great egg and spoon race we're developing whilst tying their shoelaces and now not dropping the egg. It can no longer be a 1 in 1500 dilution. Um, we need a 1 in 50 or a 1 in 100 dilution. Uh, what a career advice would you have for an aspiring principal engineer? Don't worry about it. What's the point in worrying about it? When I was 19, I wanted to fly planes. Um, I have four eyes and I have hearing problems. That would not have been good for any of the passengers. Probably wouldn't have, have been good for the aircraft. Um, I don't think people should worry about title and role. They should worry about finding something they're good at in an area where that is valued by the organization that they work for, um, where they can make a difference and, a, and an impact from a business perspective. So not finding work they're good at in an organization that needs it, that is entirely fruitless and pointless from a business impact point of view. Um, that really doesn't um, help um, the person who's doing the work for being noticed for doing the work because no one cares. Um, and the final thing is just to optimize to make sure you find all of those things. And if you can find it in one role, one job, and one location, it's almost ideal, isn't it? I think if you look after those things and apply a bit of um, Rumsfeldian risk to your life um, and to your career goals, then things basically work out. So you don't really need to sweat the details. Derek Ennis, uh, Principal Engineer for Wayfair in Berlin. Thank you very much. Very welcome. And may you have a lovely lunch.